I actually did a little bit of work, um, but uh, I was actually pretty busy with uh, a lot of things, so I was unable to stream. But I advanced on the character only in places that I already showed like how to do, right? Except for maybe one or two things that I will go over uh, today, as well as continuing the character. Uh, right now, the pieces that needs to be completed are the pieces in red. So we're very close, very close to the end with this character over here. The um, so yeah, the um, uh, the cloak and the sword are going to be, and then closing the hand on the handle of the sword will be the uh, the last thing to finish. So uh, what did I do since last time? Um, I don't fully remember everything. Uh, I know that I added the pouches at the back here. Um, I also um, finished the, uh, the, the those letter things under the belt. I actually also added the belts. Uh, I added the ropes here. Um, but like all of that, I already showed on the character in other areas how to do them. Like everything that's letter, I, I already showed letter. Um, I'll still go go over like a few pieces. There's also other pieces that I kind of like um, changed a bit. Like for example, this um, this one here is uh, changed quite a bit. Um, the biggest part is that I I actually reworked uh, all uh, like the first pass where we ha you have all the the hammering of the metal. Like that's what it looked like at first, and I actually added like a, a pass over it of like small hammering on the surface uh simply done with uh, h polish so uh h polish with uh, an alpha let's say like this one here and then like it's really simple you just go over the shape like this and it just gives like this kind of like hammered surface and then i i re-added the details on top but i smoothed them a lot i mean this is a very damaged metal but still I thought I thought that I went maybe a bit overkill with it, so uh, so yeah, this piece I reworked. Uh, I'm like pretty happy with the results uh, now after that I uh, I changed it. But uh, if we start at the bottom, just to talk a little bit about what I done before I continue on the character, uh, the boots were done. Nothing really changed about the boots. Um, I think this piece here. I think this one I did live, but I, I kind of like added this like mm, hammered uh, look to it. Um, I also added the uh, the pants. The pants were um, like it, they're pretty much like an asset that like I actually already had on another model that I just uh, placed on it and kind of like reworked to fit better. But uh, it was made from a simulation in Marmoset. If like people are asking. Um, so let's just look at, so this is pretty, this is the, uh, the pants, the shape of the pants before the detailing and the detailing is, is a simple, uh, material, a tileable alpha uh, that, uh, that my friend Tiago actually gave me, uh, it works pretty well. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a simple, like, uh, weaved material with some of these like horizontal line that are sometimes like the the cotton actually coming out i find it's a very interesting effect uh normally i do it manually but this one actually comes in it so it's pretty cool and then i added another layer just to uh, add some little like scratches here and there and holes and whatnot and uh around the holes i actually added some fiber mesh so that it actually gives kind of like a more um, a better ripped look, let's say. I'll remove the, the, the these fiber meshes to show you without. So you see, that's pretty much what you have without. I did that with the rip brush around the, around the hole here, and by adding the uh, fiber mesh again, well, you have the the full effect that's there. So yeah, um, 
I, I, I use that technique on my other uh, character of uh, the, the medieval zero from Mega Man that I did is the same technique and I'll be also using it on other pieces as well. But uh, yeah, that's how I actually did um, the pants. Uh, the, this portion of the pants though, like under the belt was done with um, the same tool that I showed you from um, from before. Uh, the uh, curve uh, cloth cloth hook, and uh, I'll probably be using cloth hook today since I'm going to be working on uh, those uh, those uh, cloak pieces here. Um, so yeah, um, I, this piece was actually made um, not during a stream, but I mean I've shown how to. Oh, Thanks for uh, thanks for the sub, AJ. Once again, I, it's not the first time that you actually sub, so uh, thanks a lot. Six months, geez. All right, that's cool. Thanks a lot, and thanks for the follow as well. Oh, Patrick, thank you so much. That's really great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I appreciate it. Nice to have a a sweet sub after a, such a long pause. <laughs> so um so yeah this uh this armor piece it's basically the same idea with the hammer and material and everything nothing really new uh it's the same technique as uh the um the shoulder and all the other uh pieces that i i did on the stream like this uh grieve griever grieve anyways tibia armor um what else well the um the the belts were also uh, added and the belts are also another instance of something that i already did like when i show you how to do this these belts here it's pretty much the same technique um so that this same letter technique as this piece as well that i showed so nothing really new here all the ropes around the character were done the same way as the ropes around the arm so once again nothing really new uh, for the tip of the ropes i simply i didn't use fiber mesh this time i actually just um took like one cylinder and i duplicated it and i just placed them one by one on at least one instance of the the rope and then i duplicated it for the three um the three um parts of the rope basically you know. Um, the braids, let's call them the braids. Uh, so I did the same thing for the ropes on the arm. I didn't do the fibers and now I actually have them. Uh, what else, what else? Well, the gauntlet, uh, the gauntlet, but once again, the gauntlet was done the exact same way as uh, the grieve and everything else. So it's really like nothing uh, new, uh, but just to show you at least the layers. So this is the, the grieve that I did um, in orthographic view in another scene before I apply it on my character. Um, the, the contours were pretty much just done with like damn standard to get that, that flare up. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and the, 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 the um, ornaments or bar relief was done with the same uh, GRO tools that I showed you on the the stream when i did the grieve here so uh yep um and this little detail was done with the same imm as the the rope thing so the the same imm for the braid so first part was actually adding all those uh damaged um damaged metal things and they are like they're the exact same technique as this here. It's just that the calibration was done a bit differently, but they're they're exactly the same technique and and whatnot. Um, and on top of that, I just added some uh, some like scratches with the exact same tool as the shoulder. So once again, technique is exactly the same as before. Um, what did I do? I did this leather piece here which is exactly the same, once again, same technique as, as before. The only thing that's different is I actually had, you know, I have those like rings going all over the uh, the edge here, but this is just like a simple IMM of like a ring. I just did a ring 
create an IMM and I was able to place them all over to make the, the stitches. Cause like you have like sometimes those like leather armor with those kind of like ring thing going all around. So, yep. Um, so this is an example of a, a cape that's under. Uh, all the, the folds were made with cloth hook once again. And the, um, those little like uh, rips of uh, fabric on the side were done with fiber mesh. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, well, yeah, there's also the collar, but once again, it's just leather. This one I decided to not use a, um, not use a, uh, just um, like a trim, a trim uh, brush to, uh, uh, not a trim brush, but more like a trail brush to make the stitches. I actually wanted them as a different mesh. So I used uh, the same IMM as this like ring pattern here. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think, I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I did. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, um, that that would actually make us up to date with what I did on the character. So I could actually uh, jump in, um, jump in the next phase of the character. So I'm just gonna remove the sword. All right, so we're today we'll be yeah, tackling the cape. I'm actually hoping to be able to finish the cape within the stream. This will mean that the only thing left will be um, the sword. So that's pretty cool. Having the sword done, uh, it will lead to the character being actually finished and ready to um, ready to put in. Uh, well, I'm gonna probably do like a quick retopo of him um well an automatic retopo basically like a like a decimation and um having the uh uvs done in uh, rezone uh this will give me the mesh the mesh i'll uh, put it in max and uh render it with uh with uh, arnold well actually i'll go through a uh, substance painter first to make the, the the texture and everything so uh and i'm thinking of showing parts of this process some 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 parts of this process is very very tedious and like it would be like social suicide almost to do a stream about that <laughs> but uh yeah i'm i'm gonna try to show like parts of it we'll see it's the first time i streamed that so like i'm not even sure what's the interesting part so yeah we'll see all right so uh let Let's jump. Uh, let's jump into this. I'll just uh, remove my sweater. Okay. All right. Let's start this ball. Okay, perfect. So um, I have this the back part here of the 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 the, the cape, which uh, is like I already placed it while I was doing the the blocking. I placed it with cloth hook once again. That's how I got the uh, this dynamic movement and uh, the folds for me look pretty good. Uh, I wanted to revisit maybe the um, um, I want I wanted to revisit maybe the 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 shape of it because I did um make this shape for the cape thinking about like the whole composition with the sword and everything but the thing is that when I actually go in um if I orbit around it in some instances it actually looks like a bit too long or sometimes maybe a bit silly so um like I don't know. Like I wanna. I'm just gonna make it one try and see if it ex if actually is better. But I'll kind of like reduce the um, the shape to make it more a little bit like more credible, I guess, and see if it actually looks still looks good in my main shot. Let's say. Western art. Yep. 
uh, the insectoid contest. Yeah, for those who uh, who don't know, we're running a contest that's actually at its end. Uh, we were running it on our Discord. If you want to join our Discord, go at the bottom of the page, uh, Chaos Mason's link or my links. Go on the Discord, join. We always want to. It's always nice to see more people. And we actually were, were uh, we were running a contest, and the uh, the contest is uh, finished uh, this week. And uh, there was a lot of great work. So. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see the final submissions. Uh, hey, the cape is the same process as the Ash and Zero cape, or are you going to use another technique? No, it's pretty much the same as the Ash and Zero cape, I'd say. Maybe I, I won't be using the same tileable alpha, but uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, yep. So yeah, first I just wanted to try something. Like I don't know how it, how it's gonna look, but I, I wanted to just shorten the um, the cape a bit and work on the um, the direction. It's not a very interesting um, movement in this um, in this angle. Normally, uh, I, my rule of thumb is that if something looks good in every angle, in like, sorry, in three angles, front, side, and top, that it's actually going to look good uh, in every angle. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Let's try. Uh, maybe the sword, I will need to change the sword orientation as well. So, like, for example, like when I look at it from the top, maybe that the sword should actually be... Um, Oops. Jesus. All right. Like maybe it should be oriented like this. It's going to make it hard to actually have the hand look good if it's oriented so much at the back like this. But the goal is to see like, oh, is it that much better when I do like a turn around? First, let's actually uh, keep the sword like it is and just turn around the character. This is uh, me experimenting. Like like I said, I'm I'm not even sure if I'll actually like it. So I might just. That's why I put it on a layer. It's because I might actually just revert to. How it was before. I'm just trying to get some. Actually, you know what? I'll get rid of the sword. And I'll just look at that. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm just looking at like the movement of the shapes and the lines and seeing if it's actually um at its at its most like dynamic and if the line flow flows well. Which I kind of feel like it does. This angle is getting a bit awkward though. But still working. All right. So like I feel that huh, see it, I I actually have like this like weird curve again that I don't really like. So now the question is does doing this destroy my work in another angle though? Sometimes it does, and sometimes you have to find like the the right balance of things. That actually, yeah, I think it looks, 
it looks kind of good so let's see so you see in the front if i do like before and after the front part here is um it's kind of like shorter it's less imposing we'll see with the with the sword what it does though but uh it's like when i turn around the character i kind of like prefer the new version but when i just look at it uh alone I'm like, ah, it's missing the... No, sorry, not alone, but I mean just like the front view. It's kind of like missing that, like, that that width. Like, the, the it's not as wide. So, uh... Hey, Mark, give me a save. You want me to save that brush? Is that it? So, yeah. Let's try this and let's see with the sword here. So you see, when you look at like the character, the composition is, is very wide. And I find that the cape actually works really better if it's, um, if it's actually also a bit like wider like this. So although this works better, 360, this works better with the composition. So I'm, one, I'm wondering if like maybe we can try to keep the, the transformation but get a bit of like the the width back let's do it in this angle here so you see it was going about like half of the sword All right. So that would be with the modification so that it actually has the same. Probably I need to bring it down a little bit though, like this. I'll just save a morph target so I can actually go and compare. So I, f I feel like I actually have the composition back for the front and now we'll see if uh, it works in in many angles. And so far, so good. It's pretty long when you look at it from the back like this. It's like, it's certain that like this thing is on the ground constantly, which in a sense kind of looks silly, but it's just, it's such a great, I really love the composition of like the long cave from the front. So like it really becomes like a question of like, do you want to have it look good for every everything or for the front only? Anyways, so I'm pretty happy with the results of like the 360 view of this. Hmm, what to do, what to do, eh? 
Yeah, I feel we're kind of like back to back to zero. Yeah, I think that um, it wasn't really like worth it to, to rework it that much. I think that uh, I'm actually having a hard time to let go of the, the, the frontal composition, even if it actually looks pretty long in some like other angle. I just really, really, really like this view here. I could try to maybe reduce it a tiny bit. See if uh, maybe there is a compromise that can be made. Looks like this is like a bit shorter. Yeah, you see, it actually makes it shorter in this angle, which really helps. But in the front view, it did not really remove too much of its like presence. So uh, that's a uh, that's a good thing. Okay, I think I'm going to actually commit to uh, this here. Because uh, I think it's a good thing if I just, I can move on from there and uh, continue with the rest. I don't think it, uh, changing it more is going to really impact my work even more than that. So. Uh, with that cape, like I said, I pre-posed it with a uh, cloth hook and it's pretty much already like there in terms of the um, of the polish, right? So for that, that's fine. Uh, let me see. Can I make this curve it's a little bit less, less harsh? A little bit more of that. Right now, I'm not really changing the mass like I was doing before. I'm more like looking at the, the line flow of things. So just making sure all the lines are kind of like all going in their own direction. Not their own direction, but like following a certain like general movement with the other lines around it. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. Yeah, I actually uh, much prefer what I have now. Oh yeah, no, I do. I, I really prefer what I have now. So good thing. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, and uh, yeah, like I was saying, the uh, the results are pretty good already of uh, what cloth, uh, cloth hook did, but there's like some uh, polishing to do for sure.
I still have this layer here with the sword. Wondering if it's going to look better if I actually have it more like... It might be better in this angle. It's going to make it harder to make it work with the hand, but uh, let's uh, let's do it anyway. Okay, all right. So this here, in terms of polishing it, uh, really the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at like the major masses and make sure there's no like weird, um, like masses or volume so uh, i guess that what i'll start by doing is uh nice frock sole yep this is exactly what it is <laughs> i'll look i'll just check the um the silhouette here it's the end of the shape of the cape but i find like i'm I've always been happy with the result if I just make sure that the end of the, of the silhouette is actually uh, dynamic and pleasing, and then I'll work like the mass so it actually like follows this like general proposition for the the shape. I'm kind of like just looking at this line here right now. This is what I'm doing. So yeah, still just looking at the silhouette. Okay, so I find that the uh, the contour has somewhat of a good shape. So I'll, I'll kind of like try to fix the um, the masses around it to adjust it to this like new shape. So um, I'll use a mix of like smooth directional and uh, simply like the clay build up to regain some of the lost masses. Like for example, like you see, I think I need like more mass right here like this. And then smooth directional to kind of like smooth in one direction only. And I smooth in the direction that the line is flowing. So uh, like I often talk about smooth directional. This is a very good example of like why smooth directional is is pretty cool. For stuff like this where you actually like have like a certain movement in your shape that you don't want to actually like lose. This works pretty good. There you go, there you go. And I'll show you the before after once I'm done. It won't take long before I'm done with that. That's uh, going to be pretty fast.
Okay. So let's just look at the before after, see how much it's uh, cleaner. Yeah, there you go, it's just cleaner like that. Good. Okay, so I'll collapse this on its shape. And the uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to see if, um, by moving the cape all around, did I, like, deform it to an unnatural level? And the way that I'll see if it's like that is I'm going to flatten my mesh using UVs and see if it's actually the the pattern of it the shape of it looks uh weird so let's um let's just copy this uh this mesh here and uh open the uh uv master thing and use let's uh let's uh, use uh unwrap wait i thought i had the uvs on this it's not giving me the option to flatten that's weird Anyways, let's just un unwrap it and uh, let's flatten it. So you see, let's put it straight first. So you see, this is the shape of my cape. So it, if you look at it, like it's not completely symmetrical. Like this piece is bigger. This piece is actually also bigger. It's kind of like off centered. Like if I was to do a mirror and weld on this, it would actually. Um, would give like weird results. But the thing is that I really doubt that this deformation is gonna to be too much so that it gives like a sense that the cape is unnatural. If the shape was really, truly weird, it could actually not really help. But um, I kind of feel like this is going to be okay. So let's copy the UVs for this mesh, paste it on our mesh here. And uh, by applying a texture on it, we'll see that it's you see, it's a uh, it's 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 working well. That's good. That's good. It means that I can actually apply apply a texture on this after. Uh, but the next step was not the texture. The next step will actually be um, to uh, give it some thickness. And now this is where like it gets this mesh is might get so extremely heavy so I mean we'll see we'll see uh, what happens but uh, yeah um, before doing this I'm going to want to actually add uh, maybe like some uh, some like some holes and some weathering in the model so uh, what I'll do is uh, okay so I'll keep a, um, a backup mesh of this because like now I'm going to do some pretty uh, destructive manipulation to it so yeah okay so f I'm gonna make sure I actually have the holes to be able and then I'm going to add the thickness and then we'll work on the rest so okay um, I'll subdivide it once just so that polygons are a little bit smaller and I'll delete the smallest subdivisions and I'll actually draw where I want uh, the holes to be so a bit like I did with the pants I'll just try to actually have like a like a good sense of like where the ribs are going to be so of course the entire bottom of the cape is going to be uh, damaged A bit of the sides as well.
and uh, also uh, some inside of the cape. So uh, I actually had a concept. I don't know if like I, uh, yeah, I could kind of like follow it a little bit. Um, let's add another one here. And, uh, maybe smaller ones. I'll let it save. Are you continuing the upload your stream to YouTube? Unfortunately, I missed your stream last week. I didn't have any stream last week, so you didn't miss anything. I was on a, I had to take a break. So uh, you didn't miss anything. And uh, yes, I will always uh, upload the, um, my things on the, uh, on YouTube. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna go for the um, for the rip. Uh, I'm just gonna lower the uh, the intensity of uh, the mesh a little bit and just try to get a little bit more of a like a ripped feeling because uh, I went pretty fast doing those uh, masks just when I had like a smaller level of So, oh yeah, by the way, if uh, anybody's asking what mu music I'm listening to right now, uh, it is the soundtrack of Chrono Trigger. <laughs> okay, so technically, let's see what we would get if we were to rip, uh, to remove these parts. So that's what we get in terms of like silhouette, which is not bad actually. I just wanna see one thing. If I actually invert my mask and hide instead, like it eats more of the cape. I actually prefer the other option. This one, yep. This one's pretty good. So I'll actually uh, delete those. And um, now I will create uh, the thickness for this mesh. Maybe I should add like another hole, a little bit like higher, meh. I don't know, I think it'll be fine. So, yep, um, it does need to be really thick. That might be a bit too thick. It's a bit smaller. Something like that, there we go. All right. And uh, now I can actually uh, subdivide, but I'll try to uh, also round those corners here like this. Uh, first thing though is, uh, well, actually, hmm. I wonder, let's, let, let's try something. Let's um, mask 
only the edges and just see if I do a um, polish by group. So it's going to round everything like this. It gets rid of the pixelated look, but I'm going to need to get some like sharpness back into them. But you see like the holes, it kind of like makes them look more like legit holes. Uh, Suno, super inspiring to see you work on these awesome projects. Thanks so much for sharing all the tips and tricks along the way. Hey, it's my pleasure. I love to, to share my knowledge like this. And I don't really have the opportunity to do it a lot because I'm so freaking busy. So uh, what I do, uh, I, when I do it like this and people are appreciate it, I'm extremely happy. So uh, yeah, okay. So now let's just get more of like that feeling of like rip back into the uh, the cape. So I'll actually load my uh, the rip brush, and uh, this will be a matter of uh, using move with accu curve. Yeah, and uh, just getting back a bit more like uh, more interesting silhouette. The thing about moving though is that I don't want to move too much because the more that I move, the more that I, I'm like skewing my UVs and uh, making the fabric Like stretched in this area like we don't see the fabric right now right but I know it's going to be stretched if I actually move too much so uh, you have to take that in consideration and try to minimize the movement of the polygons and everything but you see already that looks better so Sometimes I like to flip things like this. So like not making them too um, like on the same plane. Okay, this is a weird uh, mesh right there. Eh, whatevs. So yeah, this process is a little bit tedious. I prefer it when a, a process can be like pretty quick, but uh, this one seems like we're gonna need to take a, a bit more our time to do it well. Oops.
Oops. Especially what I'm trying to do is um, a lot of it looks uh, smoothed because, uh, like, looks smooth because of the um, the fact that it's all like rounded and everything. So this is mainly what I'm trying to get rid of right now. Okay, so so the, we did that part. We did until here. So that's good so we're up to here now all right um hello marco hello renato how are you doing man uh fine pretty f pretty fucking stressed um pretty busy stressed <laughs> there's a lot of things happening in the in my life right now so it shoots in every cannons let's say it shoots on all cannons i should say um but uh eh, you know what trying to think about myself a little bit trying to relax a bit at night if i can that sort of stuff not easy not easy i'll i'll be honest i, I won't give you the oh everything's fine answer it's hard hard time hope you're doing well as well Hey sir, uh, do you by any chance work with Photoshop too? Uh, yes, I do work with Photoshop. Uh, yes, I do. A little bit. Ah, Medzi. Bonjour, Medzi. How are you doing? Nice to see you. It's been a while that I saw you here. J'espère que ça va bien. You see, it's kind of like, looks decent. I'm, I'm happy of the results right now for this. I, you see, like this long stretch here, like it's on the same plane on both sides and it it's actually doesn't really make sense. So we're actually going to use this opportunity to really like, like flap it open, if I can say. There you go. And this one we can like flap it inside just to accentuate the effect even more. Let's make that a little bit, yeah. Ouais, pas top, mais regarde, on fait de notre mieux. Merci pour la sympathie. Uh, do you have experience with vector mask? I'm having a problem I can figure out. Uh, no, 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 I won't be able to help you like that. I'm not uh, that knowledgeable. Plus, I don't have Photoshop open, so I won't really be able to answer that. Uh, it's very impressive that you still find the time to work on private stuff while you're stressed. Well, I mean, it's kind of like... I kind of like need to work on private stuff when I'm stressed uh, because uh, it, it does really take my mind off like uh, a lot of things. I mean, I, I'm so like, don't quote me on this, um, but um, like, I'm pretty sure that I have ADD or some form, like maybe just like a minor one because I, I know some people that like, their their life is pretty hard because of their ADD, right? So like me saying like, oh, I have ADD, like nonchalantly, uh, could al almost be like insulting. But uh, I, I kind of like have the feeling that I I have it. And what happens is that when my mind is not occupied, um, it 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 gets like pretty painful. Like I start to think about like everything, and uh, if I want to like if some if something's on my mind and I cannot do anything about it, um, it's going to be hard for me to like not think about it. And so even if I don't have any control and I cannot do anything about it and I'm just waiting to see what happens, uh, my mind just cannot let go, except if I actually um, 
make myself like really busy. So uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like a coping mechanism, I guess. Uh, but uh, it works works for me. I'm not saying it's necessarily healthy. I'm just saying it it works for me. And uh, working is like I said, a, it's a great way to it's a great like a escapism in a sense, right? Especially when I do things like design and research. Like right now I'm researching um, the next series that will come after the, the, the Archangels. Because uh, if any of you is following me on my social medias, um, right now I'm posting my, uh, my Archangels. I'm finished with the, the renderings and everything. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so like I'm super happy to, to, to post them. Yeah, by the way, if anybody wants to follow what I do, uh, just click on the link below here. Marco's link. You can follow me on the uh, Art Station, Instagram, whatever. Some of these uh, links are from uh, links to follow my company, but this is where this is where I post my work as well. So follow us, encourage us, or don't. Just do whatever feels right. But uh, yeah, no. If you um, if you want to take a look, my Archangels are a big project that I did recently that I'm really happy to that it comes to an, an end. Um, I'm happy of the results. I'm happy of people's response. Um, and I'm working on the next series in the world of the Neo Apocalypse. So, uh, and for those who've been following me for even further, you know that I did also the, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, of the Neo Apocalypse. And um, I'm pretty happy uh, about that piece as well. And the Archangels are pretty much the, like, the antithesis for the four horsemen but the world my like my my uh, ip my lore of neo apocalypse doesn't end there there's many things to to come and uh right now i'm uh working on the next uh, the next series which is going to be uh right now i'm calling them the elementalists i'm not i don't know if i'm actually going to rename them but for the moment i like the name and um, the way that I like to work when I do series like this, it's I try, I really take the long way home while doing that, which I I don't mind doing. And um, I'm actually like studying right now, like some aspects of like the elements and how they're, uh, perceived in different different religion, like in Buddhi, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, even like uh, the Greeks and uh, all that sort, of, all that stuff. I'm kind of like just looking at like how they're perceived and stuff, and it's giving me ideas on like how those characters would actually be in tune with the elements. And uh, I find I got, I I think I got a pretty good idea of like uh, like a good like driving idea so i think i'm on a good uh, on the right track with those but it just to say that like when i do those kind of like research there's like a lot of like daydreaming or like just pondering and that sort of stuff and it, it does really occupy my my mind a lot and it it helps me like when i have like hard times and stuff um yeah just like really putting my head into it yeah it does help me i mean i used to do that with uh with video games lately i've been really all about doing 3d art it's been a while that i played video games actually um the last game i played was elden ring which uh <laughs> that was a that was an adventure <laughs> that was a commitment but um yeah, it's just to say that um, for me, when I work and I do my personal projects, it's 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 kind of like necessary for me. I, I I'd say, yeah. Anyways, I don't really know why I was talking about that. So, uh, yeah.
Okay, thanks anyway. Oh, no problem. Um, Medzi, heart. Cœur à toi aussi, Medzi. Uh, that's what I have to do. Yep, yeah, there we go. A chaos, love your work. Got the cool robot pen holder set up on my desk. <laughs> cool. Awesome. That's great. Uh, we're sold out, eh? We sold all of them. I think I we sold... Yeah, we sold like a lot. Like it's been a couple of years that we're selling this one and we probably like did the last batch because the last batch was hard to to sell, but we're finally done with those. And um yeah, it's cool. I'm really happy that like it got a it got around. So uh I'm uh, happy to hear that. Uh, how many pieces will the Archangel series have? Oh, it's a 3. It's um it's a uh, a trinity that I decided to do for the uh, the archangels, and for the uh, elementalists, it's going to be uh, four, of course. Well, I mean, it could be five. I mean, I think it's the um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the the Greek mythology, uh, not mythology, but uh, like Aristotle, like basically uh, says that there is like five elements. Because there's like fire, air, wind, and earth, but also there's like void, uh, which I, I kind of like like the idea of that. Um, and also, if I'm not mistaken, like in Chrono Trigger, there is void. It's I think it's Magus who's actually using that, or like dark matter or something like that. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah. Anyways, I mean. I'll see four or five. I mean, five character is starting to be a lot for a series, so uh, I don't know. Like uh, normally, I like the idea of like three or four. We'll see. I mean, how much insectoids do I have? I have four. So yeah, but I have uh, other ideas for other insectoids also. So uh, yeah. At some point, I might do do another insectoid. Okay, so the silhouette is like I went around with the, the move brush, so um, I think the next step would be subdivide it and use uh, the rib brush, and um, it doesn't show, but like we're rapidly getting to the end of uh, the cape because like what's going to be, like the texturing inside, not texturing, but the detailing inside is a lot of like just like alphas and stuff like that. So um, yeah, let's uh, save. For the moment. Uh, by the way, congratulations on your new piece. Pieces posted there are amazing. You're a great inspiration. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that you like them. I uh, spent a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time on them. So, uh, oh, that's great. Thanks. Thanks for the kind words. I uh, really appreciate it. All right, so let's do a dynamic subdivision. Let's see how it would actually subdivide if I was to subdivide. And it's kind of like it rounds the edges a lot. So I think I'll actually add a, a crease on the polygroups and add one level of crease so that when it actually like it subdivides, it stays like a little bit like sharp on the edges. And it also like loses a lot of like the sharpnesses. So I wonder if I actually could add a um, like more like polygroup differences automatically using like uh, the angle, like a sharper angle. Yeah. This way I'm not losing them uh, as much. It's better. So I will subdivide like this. Am I missing something first? Am I going too fast? Like I'm just making sure there's no like point of no return. But, but I think I'm good. I think that should be good. So uh, let's go with uh, that. So let's transform this dynamic subdivision to a real subdivision. And uh, now I'll take the um, rib brush and just go around adding some... Uh, Well, you know what? I, I also want to add a little bit of uh, twisty turnies, let's say. Thank <laughs> you. 
maybe I'll, I'll, I'll add one here because that's a pretty big uh, hole for uh, those two sides to be on the same plane. Because that's really what it is. Eh? It's just like if if you actually rip something in two parts, like what are the chances that they are going to be still aligned on the same kind of like line? So you see like that break here is way more like credible, I find. And it's not like I'm like a stickler for realism. I'm often I'll just err on the side of a... Just doing it like half-assly as long as it looks okay. But I don't know. I mean, my eye catches this detail and it makes me want to fix it. So let's fix it. All right. Let's subdivide it one more time. And so th there's two ways I can go at it. One would, so if I actually use the grid brush, that's what it does, right? It's like an uneven line. That's just what it is. And I can do it like negatively as well. But the goal is just to go around and to add this on the sides here. Uh, before I do, I'll add a layer in case I want to maybe uh, tone down the effect if I do it too much. But uh, what I can do is... Let's uh, just make sure it does work. Yeah, okay. So if I actually just go around the silhouette and I, I actually click out, it does like in and out. So you see like this is in, this is out, and the bottom line is in and out at the same time. And it actually uh, just creates like a, kind of like a more like uh, unpredictable uh, uh, line. See here it's too much, so I'll just remove it later though. I just, I don't want to actually have to change my brush every time that I make a, that I exaggerate. So I'll go all around doing this on the silhouette and then toning it down. But also in some instances, I might actually just like, like use it to do, to kind of like flare the shape up. Like it does, I kind of like twist it on itself a little bit. This is way too much. And um, like I said, the, the results is going to be much better once that I add the fiber. Right now I'm just looking to create some kind of like a, like uneven uh, effect on the sides. It won't look good in like the two um, on both sides, so I kind of like have to uh, rework one side maybe. Uh, do you prefer to work with models for printing or real time models? Why? Um, I mean, with time, I kind of like started to appreciate more uh, models for printing, and um, but there's like pros and cons for each. So the cons for a model for printing is that often you have to exaggerate the effects and the details. And sometimes it can, act it can actually look like a bit silly when you're doing like renders of your character. Uh, but like you're sometimes the ex these exaggeration are done so that it actually um, shows on the print, right? Because uh, when you print, you kind of like lose things sometimes. So you have to exaggerate a lot. And sometimes those exaggeration are don't, have like the finesse that I would be looking for to make like nice sharp renders and stuff. But um, the pros of like doing things for print is that you like it kind of like not that it forces you, but 
the characters are always like posed, right? And like I find that like a posed character is so like more inspiring than a character in a T pose. And it's it's nice to actually like work for this pose. I like it. Hmm, is that a mistake here? It's kind of exaggerated. So yeah, I do I do like to work for um to work uh, for a three D printing. Plus, I mean, I really do love to have like a physical copy of my my things, be able to print it or whatever. Like right now, for those who watch my stream before, you know that like normally at the back here, I have a ton of statues and everything. Uh, right now, I don't have a lot of things because I had to move my statues at uh, someone's place uh, temporarily. So. Um, I don't have them, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I love collectibles and, and stuff like that. Statues. I'm not like the biggest collector. Uh, I collect a lot of like things that my friends did or, um, uh, stuff that I did myself. But yeah, I do. I do love that. I love it. So for me, the restrictions of print, although they can be frustrating at time, they they kind of like always make me feel like it's worth it in the end if like you're going to print your 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 characters because like for example if you look at the um, my archangels uh, there's not really like a lot of like small intricate like details like on on them if you compare to like other of my 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 works like um for example um vector brawler or um like for example let me just like I'll, I'll use visual support for this so if you um if you go on my website i'll need to by the way i'll need to just make that website a little bit more modern because uh, it's pretty old um so if you look at uh, for example the uh If you look at like this character, the amount of like details, it's it, it looks okay for like this like this sense, but like if you zoom in, it starts to maybe like lack in details, maybe. And um, but the thing is that like I knew this character was going to be printed, so like there's so much you can do when you 3D print. Um, but if you look at like other of my characters, like. Uh, ba -ba or as a vector does. Okay, there we go. Let's take the zoom on the head. Like this character here, it's like much more intricate, like where it gets like around all of those those parts and everything. And um, but this is never gonna show in the print, so it's all useless detail. So this is like the major difference that I see between like printing for video games and or like real time or just renders and printing for um for uh sorry modeling for printing or modeling for like renders and real time and whatnot it's really uh, yeah the amount of like details you can actually go in is much uh higher and if you do it for models that are going to be printed uh you there's a a fair chance that you're going to actually just completely lose those details or even it's just like going to make it look more like flat and dirty so uh flat and dirty <laughs> is there a mom joke right there <laughs> oh boy sorry um yeah so i think that the um <laughs> sorry um <laughs> so yeah no the the um yeah that would be my my reasoning <laughs> sorry everyone i amuse myself uh, i hardly laugh these days uh because i'm so stressed and busy and everything uh this felt uh, this felt good
And the, like this character, uh, this character, I'm, I'm kind of like going in the middle, I'd, I would say, of like the idea of printing it or doing a render. Because like if ever I want to print him, I, I think I'll just do like a, a detail boost pass. Maybe like erase some details that would look wrong if I print. So like I would need to kind of like adjust it. But uh, in the meantime, I'm uh, yeah, I'm just going a little bit of in the, in the middle to to know like yeah. So if I actually don't go really into super small detail, it's because I, I'm kind of like my intention is maybe to add them in the uh, in texture and during the texturing. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it really is more impressive to the eyes a character posed and with a base composing with scenery. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Execute effects. What did you tune into? Uh, you tuned into trouble, my friend. And dad joke to mom jokes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, my villain arc begins. 2022 that's where i i break bad uh can i show the whole character indeed there we go we're getting there we are getting there thank you medzi Yeah, talking about Breaking Bad, I just finished Better Call Saul. I'm not going to say anything. No spoilers. No spoilers. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to say, oh boy, is it a good show. I was on the floor at the end. Fucking loved it. Said about the Chrono Trigger. Yep, it's a frog from Chrono Trigger in the world of Elden Rings. Elden Ring, not Elden Rings. I was wondering where did you render those Archangel statues? It's Arnold. We actually uh, we show the entire process. It's not with the same character. It's with a character that Cedric did, but we actually show the entire process of uh, doing a automatic. Um, automatic meshes and automatic UVs, then uh, painting in substance and rendering in Arnold, we all sell it. Like if you go on our website here in our gum road or just on our, the, our the in the Chaos Mason store, uh, you'll see the, um, it's called Mother. It's the name of the tutorial. And it's about uh, that process. It pretty much answers uh, all the question you could have. All right. All right. Well, 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 well. The answers are in your hands. All right. I'll just go around another one more time just to make sure I touched a little bit of like everything. And I'll do like a final pass. just to make sure that, oops. That I don't have like a... See, I'm, there's some, some parts I kind of like missed it. Just want to make sure everywhere it's uh, somewhat consistent. 
Oops, I'll have to fix that later. All right, and I'll be adding like fibers on the uh, on other areas. So uh, yeah, so yeah, this is just I just want to kind of like fix where it bled too far on the the rips. And on the other side as well. Looks uh, looks decent. Okay, I guess it should be all right. So now what we'll do is we'll add like another frequency of detail to this. Um, I'll actually go and add the the highest frequency of detail, and then we'll work the frequencies in the middle. Um, uh, damn must be heavy for Arnold to handle such a heavy mesh. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, it's more like the amount of textures as well. That's like pretty hard. Like the renders are pretty fucking long for sure. But uh, for less, less complex models, and even if you render in like a less of a big resolution, you can actually get pretty fast results. It's a good technique. I, I like it. Uh, I was looking at uh, Michael Mik uh, Mikhail again, and man, that's so cool. Could you tell me a little bit? about the process to do the hair. Um, well, I mean, I can, oof, is it gonna make the computer crash if I, it's a very, very long process actually. <laughs> um, do I have time to deviate from there? Uh, I, I think I'd rather explain it like another time. Maybe uh, ask a question again on another stream, because uh, I really, I just, I don't really want to break like what I'm doing right now. All right. So this is all the ripping. I'm going to actually commit this detail. And uh, so now, let's. Um, Let's actually add the, um, the detailing. So for the detailing, what I will do is I'll actually use surface mode here, noise. Uh, I'll tell him to go by UVs and I'll simply load one of the textures that uh, Tiago gave me. So it's just a, it's a pretty good one though. So, uh, it's um, I think this one here. So remove the noise. I'll actually keep some noise to make it look like a bit cottony, maybe. Yeah. Uh, let's augment the strength and play with the side. There you go. Okay. So now you can actually start to see it. So this is the. Uh, oops. This is the fibery um, texture. The weaves. Let's see if the details like this match the other scale of the fabrics. Oh, it actually does. Okay. So right now this is not really on the mesh. It's just the surface noise, right? So I'll actually like commit it to the mesh. Um, I 
I'm sure I don't have enough subdivision level, and this subtool will need to be highly subdivided to actually do the, the job, so. All right, let's um, just see what it does if I, sub if I um, apply to the mesh. All right, so you see it's really not enough. But maybe one more subdivision will do. Well, the question is how much million polygons do we have on this already? I'm at 5 million, 5.5 million right now. So by subdividing it, I will go upwards of 20 million just for the cape, which is a lot for sure. A lot. But uh, it's such a big piece of the character, so it's kind of like, yeah, of course it's going to be big like this. So I guess that will just, we'll do it. So five level of subdivisions for a total is going to be pretty much like 23 million. Yeah, 23 million, there you go. If you round it up, and if you apply to mesh now, it should actually look uh, decent. And this, you could, for example, keep this layer, uh, I mean the fabric on this layer, and be able to turn off the fabric in case that you want to do this in the substance if you, if you want. But I like to have the, the, the detail on the high-res mesh, at least, so yeah. Um, this might actually be too, like, not intense enough for the resolution. It's supposed to be kind of like the same resolution and strength as, like, this little part here. I guess we'll double the layer. We'll merge both together, or actually no, I'll just lower one of the sliders here. I think it could be good. Let's merge. So now I have uh, this detail on the layer here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some permanent wrinkle to this. And for this, I don't need to be at my highest level of subdivision. It's just going to slow things down. And I have this um, this tool here. Well, it's a brush. Wrinkle bed sheet. There we go. And what it does, it actually does this here. So it's kind of like a couple of like wrinkles and everything. So like, especially like low on the cape, I'm gonna want to have those, those here. I'll add them a little, bit, uh, a little bit less intense though. And there's a certain direction also that I'm uh, I'm looking for. And like always, I will morph brush I will more brush it a little bit just in case I went too strong. I'll reduce the intensity and I'll add some more in the in the middle here. 
Just to have like a hint. Okay. Hmm, I don't know if uh, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, I think I, I, I lowered the subdivisions too much. I put it at. Hmm. No, wait. No, I think it's fine. Wait. Oh my god, no. <laughs> I lost my work because I just have four undoes because the mesh is so heavy oh that sucks balls are you kidding me oh that sucks balls that sucks a lot of balls i have to start again oh boy okay all right whatever uh Anyways, I mean, redoing something for the second time is always uh, faster than the first. So, uh, that's alright. No big deal, no big deal. Okay, let's um, let's keep it to that. Um, you lost undos, yeah, because um, my subdivisions are so high that it kind of like caps like the undos at some point. Nice little zbrushy surprise, yeah, <laughs> a very zbrushy surprise indeed. I'll just change my music in the meantime. Okay, so that will be one other layer, and uh, I'll had, I'll had, I'll add um, another one. So another layer here um cloth dot yep yeah, okay so this one is more like a, there, there's already a, a little bit on here so you see like those little dots a little bit everywhere they're kind of like weaves of the cloth that actually went undone so i will actually add just a little little bit more
so that's a lot. I'll just uh, space the placement a little bit more, reduce the flow, augment the space. Yeah, that's better like this. So now I'll reduce the strength because I just wanted to see what I'm doing. And there's a lot of things that I do in back face when I work on the cape because uh, because uh, the uh, both of the surfaces are so close one to the other. Then uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. So now that I have this. Actually, I'll, I'll merge those uh, those two layers together. The kind of like mid detail and uh, whatnot, and the texture. So they're in both two different layer, two different layers. And uh, the next thing I could do is actually just see if I add the the the, um, the fiber mesh if it's going to give that last like feel to it. Uh, for the cape, so let's um, let's dive in that. So what I'll do is um, I'm actually going to uh, well at this point I could also give the proper materials and everything. Let's remove my layers. I wonder if I want to lower also this uh, effect. Maybe it's a bit too strong right now. Yeah, I think um, this is a little bit better. Okay. I kind of feel like it's make, missing something. Let's uh, let's try to add something else. It's just like a noise brush. It's not this one. Paint surface. Yeah, it's just like a general like noise thing. Maybe not that strong, just four maybe. Just to make the, the, the cloth look a little bit older, dirtier. Can change the sizes also. Then when I change the size, I also reduce the strength of the brush. Okay, let's just see what this did with the before and after. So this is after, this is before. Yeah, it's um, subtle. But I think it is better. I'll reduce it to uh, Let's 
it's uh, very laggy because it's such a big uh yeah yeah so you see and i'll actually merge those two together so it's now part of it yep i think this is going to be all right so yeah let's go for the um the fibers now so I'll actually i'll duplicate this mesh and uh i'll bake the layers, reduce the mesh to very low. I think two is gonna be enough. Yeah. And uh, I will actually get rid of the... Uh... Well, I know I won't get rid of it, but I'll mask it. And where I have the mask right now, this is where I can actually make the fibers appear. So I'll just need to um, aim to have kind of like the same fiber feeling as this here. So let's, uh, oop, not noise. Let's um, fire my mesh, there we go. So new, all right, so this is pretty intense right now. Uh, let's um, remove, reduce the amount of fibers, the length, of course, uh, remove the gravity a bit and have some gravity. Uh, coverage is basically their thickness, but uh, I'll need to actually like give them a profile of uh, three, like three sides, at least. Um, don't really need much twist, actually. I think those are okay. Now it's the length again. I think I need more fibers. Maybe less coverage. And I'll need to give them like some movements also after, but okay, yeah, also there's like the um the variations in length. Do I want to have it less or more? Yeah. More is better. So now the question is, do I think that this is going to be enough? And it's um, it's always hard to say. I think I'll add a little bit more fibers. So I think this will probably be enough to play around with it. Is my coverage okay? I think that my coverage should be a little bit bigger. It's hard to say at first. You kind of like have to experiment with it. But I think that this is probably going to be good enough. And also there's going to be like other longer fibers that I'm going to to use. So I might actually do it in two passes. One for like the, the contour and the other one for kind of like the, the holes here. Where like the fibers maybe like it did like a, you know, like jeans. Where like if it rips, you actually have fibers that go from one end to the other still so we'll see so let's commit to this uh let's click accept as preview rendering fiber is currently off would you like to activate fast preview no i do not want fast preview so i'll keep this mesh just right there in case and you, I will actually give you the same polygroup as the rest. So this mesh right now, it has 
the fiber mesh property is still on it. So if I actually go and click on move brush, in the options of like the move brushes and the modifiers, you will have, or in the fiber mesh options in the, the brush menu, you'll have these options here, like prever, pres, uh, preserve length and that sort of stuff. And uh, also auto mask fiber mesh. So this auto mask fiber mesh makes sure that if I use the move brush, the base of the fiber mesh stays where they are, which is a good thing. Um, so I'll go use a groom brush. I'll just use the one to do um, like spikes, groom spikes, there we go. And I'll add some little spikes in the fibers and everything. Uh, Renato is getting awesome, thank you. Is the linen on the cape a noise? The linen. Um, yes, it's a noise I just added. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, thank you, Matt. So yeah, so the, the spike brush just actually it, it gives me those little spikes here and it just makes it look a little bit better because right now they're all like not equally distanced, but there's a certain like rhythm to it that I don't like, a certain constants, and this actually helps to kind of like toss these things around a little bit. And you can actually give them like different directions as well. So There might be a couple of like fibers that are going a bit haywire. I might actually, uh, I might actually like fix them after that. Like right now, I just want to have like a base of, uh, of movement with the fibers. Getting there, getting there. There's like section that's at sections that wordly it looks like there's like less of those like meshes, uh, those fibers. But uh, overall, it's not bad. Yeah, overall, it's not bad. There's a little a couple of parts where it's a bit weird what it did. I thought I fixed that.
So also what I do sometimes, I just like smooth them out when they're, like I said, they're going a bit crazy, you know? And also like, maybe I don't want to have like the fibers being all the same like strength everywhere. Sometimes maybe like patches where it seems like it didn't really It didn't really um, form that much like fibers. Mask by Polygroup can help select the bad ones masked by polygroups well i mean some sections i have different polygroups but a lot a lot of it is um on the same polygroup so um and also i, I don't really want to select like one at a time i think i can waste like a lot of time with that so i i'd rather just like s like check for like chunks that are problematic and apply like the smoothing on, on those because going one by one can be um, a huge pain in the butt I think this section is a bit weird here. Oops. So that was that was the um, the spike brush. Now I'll use the uh, the move brush to have a little bit more uh, control. I'll actually use preserve length also. So I don't feel like I need to change the length. It's more like changing the orientation of some of them. And there's also um frontal collision. I'll put to zero because it's kind of like avoiding the hair to collide into each other. But I I really don't care. So this is well this will help me for like the last parts of fiber that are not acting like I want. I'll let it save. Gosh, is tomorrow the final of the contest. Yep. Tomorrow is the end of the contest of the insectoid contest. Well, tomorrow, if you're listening to this live, of course. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, um, one of the things that uh, I think is fun about the contest is that um, one of the prizes is that uh, I will be reviewing the people's work 
uh, here on Twitch. Uh, also uh, posting it on YouTube afterwards. But yeah, I will be um, actually um, going over the, the work, giving my thoughts, that sort of stuff. So yeah, there will be a, there will be a Twitch uh, session with um, like me commenting on the work and everything or whatever. So that that should be interesting. I'm used of doing live reviews for. Uh, when I uh, evaluate people's work at school, but this is going to be uh, yeah, this is going to be something a bit different, for sure. I'm adding just like little spikes of uh of fibers. So I I have turned the uh preserve length at zero so I can actually Add link to the uh, the fibers. All right. And let's add the um the last part which would be the fibers inside of the holes. So for this um hmm how am I going to proceed? I think I'll go manually. So I'll use this uh, temporary mesh here to place a um, a curve tube mesh, and oops. But I want to change in the stroke menu. I want to change it to curve as line. There we go. So this way I can actually just add a curve that goes from one end to the other. So that's probably too thick. Yeah, I'll just uh, inflate it. Uh, maybe not not that much. A little bit more. 
yeah, should be all right. <sighs> so um, what I'll be doing is I'll actually going to just create a bunch in a row. So I'll turn to the other gizmo and I'll use control while moving and then remove control and continue on the move. And it does create like a bunch in a row. I'll probably won't keep them all, but I'll actually start with that. Let's duplicate this. And let's <clears throat> let's kind of like place them so they are oriented with the um Okay. Uh, one thing that I didn't really take in consideration is that the fibers are not going in the right direction, though. But I think I'll create enough chaos in them so that like it's not noticeable. Where will it be? Hmm. Ugh, I regret it. Maybe I should start this over and do it do it well. So now they are in the right direction. Okay, and uh, now that I have all those in a row, I'll simply use uh, move, but with topology activated. So it moves like one at a time. And I'll just like... Add some like chaos like this. Like I'm saying, there might be like a bit too much fibers. Maybe I don't want this amount of like fibers. I want uh, more like negative space. So let's uh, give them a different poly groups and kind of like remove a couple of them. Oops. Come on. So that's kind of cool. Yep. Okay, that's nice. So now I'll just fix the um, like the point of entry. Let's call it. 
making sure that they all touch the edges. And I'll smooth them so that they actually are not going past the edge. And I'm actually going to do the same in the other direction. Probably once that I did the one of them, I'll I'll just like duplicate one instance of it and uh, All right, and same thing here. Move with topology. There we go. Do I need this many? Something like this. There you go. All right. Okay, 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 okay. So yeah, I guess that would be like one of uh, one of uh, one of them. I still think that there is maybe a little bit too much fiber in there. But before I start like uh, fixing that, I think I'll actually just collapse those two lay those two um, together and. Um, I'm actually going to duplicate it and reuse them on the other uh, the other holes. Oops.
Oof. <laughs> on the side is the it does not look good. Oh boy. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Yeah, I'll need to flatten the uh the two of them together a little bit more. Come on. Let's just select them. Okay. Uh, I don't know what geez, what's happening? Okay, my keyboard was uh, acting weird. Okay, it's still acting weird. Why is it doing that? Okay, this layer, this layer. So my goal is just to kind of like align them on the same plane a little bit more. Uh, going to bed now. Good night, Marco. Thanks for the stream and hope to see you soon again. Of course, of course. Thanks for passing by. Always nice to see you, Medzi. I'm watching the live and also modeling. There's nothing better. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, as I say, uh, I always like to know that people are working at the same time as me, so uh, that's awesome. I will duplicate this one. So now it's probably going to be a little bit easier to make sure they, their point of entry is Oops. All right, it's still a bit problematic. So I'll actually, I'm using, I'm going to use trim, trim dynamic to kind of like push them towards the edge like this. It's going to kind of like crush them towards the edge. So I'm actually going to get the results that I want this way. There we go. Maybe a, maybe a bit thick. I think I'll uh, huh. 
Like I have a mesh here. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's see if I can reuse really this one and if it's going to uh, be a little bit more plug and play. So what a different poly group, uh, poly paint. It's easier to see. Oof, starting to get pretty tired in here. But uh, I'm getting there. The smaller holes, we won't need this. So I guess there's just one left, okay. All right. So I'll just add. I just, I'll just add a, a layer. A layer to those and see if I can just like play around and get uh, better results. Let's just uh, start with the small ones.
Okay. Like those, um, I think what bothers me with this one is uh, those like long hair like this. I think I'd like to like shorten them maybe. I think this looks um, better. So we just need to do the same for the last one. I can already tell it like my brain is too tired to be like really um, like objective about the whole thing. So I might actually need to look at it um, tomorrow again because uh, yeah I'm uh, starting starting to get per, like too tired in here
Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, so... So... What about that now? I guess maybe that the... Actually, the fabric is not strong enough. Now that I see, like, the, the fibers. So maybe I should, like, boost this by duplicating the layer. So by boosting it, it kind of like feels that it's actually like the fibers feel more like in tune with the um, with the details. So uh, I think I'm actually going to go for like this heavy of um, of detail height. Maybe one last thing I can hide. Uh, hide. <laughs> I say my brain is so tired right now um, that I can add would be like the like little rips here and there on the on the cloth. And for this, I won't need to be at my maximum level of subdivision. So just like little like scratches here and there. Okay, let's see the before and after with this layer. Yep, those were a good addition. Okay, so you know what? For the moment, I will call this one uh, done. And um, what I'll do is um, I'll need to um, have a fresh eye on this before I can actually uh, truly uh, call it done. So, um, so yeah, probably at tomorrow I'll check. I'll see if I needed to fix anything. 
or if it's um, like I'm really uh, ready ready to move on, or I might actually just finish the other uh, part of the the cape. So like the the second the upper uh, layer here, and see how it looks in uh, in general. Yeah, 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 I think I'm gonna do that. So let's save this. Actually, let's put the sword again, just so we have a good idea of like what needs to be done so that it's finished. And uh, I mean, we're getting there. We are getting there. That cape thing. Sword. And then that is it. That'll be nice. All right, cool. So, yep, let's call this done. Um, oh, what time is it? Uh, it's uh, 11.30 right now at night. All right. So, uh, everyone, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for being patient. Uh, I know it was a long time before, um, before I come back. So... Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for being here. Uh, I'll be uh, continuing this on a more regular basis uh, now, so you can probably expect me to do a stream uh, next Wednesday. Might be next Tuesday actually, because Wednesday I have uh, family obligations. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I'm back, baby, <laughs> and. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to be more than happy to host this again so we can actually check it out, have fun, uh, work together and everything. So, uh, yeah. Um, Patrick, Frog Chaos, very good. <laughs> Thanks for the stream, no problem. Thanks, Marco, no problem. Thank you, Marco, no problem. I discovered you through the Outgang interview. Glad I found your stream. Yeah, uh, Laura's pretty cool. Laura is pretty cool. So uh, it's nice that uh, we can actually, uh, she can actually discover us uh, through this. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, perfect, yep. Anyways, I was checking if there is somebody I can raid, but it uh, seems that there's not really much people. So uh, yeah, thank you for another great, great live and share your knowledge with us man really appreciate it so um looking forward to do it again so officially i wish you everyone a great night a great scope soiree for those who are, will continue working and i'm going to see you next week so take care <laughs>